Hey everybody, and welcome to another video from me, Benjamin Crudwig, here on the Benjamin Collin Fashion and Textile Designs stuff. Um, this is going to be a slightly different video than you would normally get from me. This is a more like a process vlog um, of how I made this cool vest. I'll do a, like a full reveal later um, at the end of the video, so you'll have to stick around to watch that. Quick heads up, um, the first few videos of this footage that I, I took doesn't have any sound, so I'll be doing some voiceover to kind of talk you through the process of what I was doing. Um, always check your footage, kids. Always check your footage right after you take it. Check it to make sure that there is freaking sound. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you all enjoy. Um, this is going to be a fun video. Um, I hope it's something, I'm really happy with the project itself. It's comfy, it's cozy. Um, yeah, so enjoy this video. And uh, next time I do a video like this, I'll check my footage. All right, so in order to start weaving, I needed to warp my loom. And before that, I need to measure my warp. So for this project, I was using a yarn from Anzulu Luxury Fibers called For Better or Worsted. And here I am using my 14 yard warping board, measuring off a warp of, I believe it was about five or six yards. And so it's just back and forth, using the pegs as a guide to ensure that I'll have enough yarn to put on my loom. Spoiler alert. There's not quite enough yarn uh, or not enough warp for what I had originally wanted to do, which was to make a cardigan. However, um, I think part of that was attributed to the fact that this yarn is fairly stretchy. So as I was measuring the warp, um, it was stretching a little bit. As it was put on the loom, it stretched even further. And that's just what it is. That's, that's how it goes. So what I'm doing here is counting how many passes I've done and then marking it with some thread. Um, that way I knew exactly how many warp ends I was measuring. It's very easy to lose count in this stage. <laughs> it's just what happens sometimes. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm just gonna continue warping or measuring my warp here. And at the next stage, it will be time to put it on the loom. So here is my finished measured out warp. Um, you can see this color is just absolutely stunning, but I have added the ties over on the edge there in groups of 10. So uh, 10 plus just a little bit, essentially. And this was helping me count exactly how many threads I needed. And um, I'm just using kind of like a, a chain stitch essentially to keep them all together. Um, yeah, again, this color is absolutely stunning. I'll snip off that long piece that's going to the ball of yarn. And what I'll need to do is add chokes to it um, and then pass it, um, well, it's time to slay the reed, which means putting it all throughout the reed here and then it'll be time to pass it through uh, what's called a heddle, which is in the next step of the loom. Um, for this one, I was using a 10 dent reed, and uh, that means there's tens and 10 ends per inch. Um, so that's how separated the yarn is. I think I needed to actually use a finer set than I did for the project, but honestly, I'm still happy with how the fabric turned out on this step. So these are the harnesses. Um, there's eight of them on my baby wolf loom. Uh, I'm only using the first four on this pattern. And then these are the heddles. So each heddle is attached to one of the harnesses. And this determines the uh, which threads go up um, when you press the treadles that are down on the floor. So this is how I'm gonna get my pattern when I'm weaving. And you will see uh, in the next clips, me passing the yarn through the reed and then each yarn will go through one of the heddles, depending on what my pattern says, and uh, then I can start weaving. 
All right, so here is the view from the other side of the reed. Uh, again, I'm using a stainless steel reed at 10 ends per inch. Uh, I do think I probably needed to do it at 12 ends per inch, maybe even 16 ends per inch for the twill pattern uh, that I chose. But, you know, it's all good. It's all a learning experience. I didn't lose too much yardage <laughs> to that mistake. Totally fine. So here's just some sped up footage of me pulling one thread through each of these slots in my reed. And um, yeah, so each one of these that gets pulled through will then go through one of the heddles over to the right here that determines my pattern. But yeah, enjoy this little bit of relaxing uh, <laughs> pulling yarn through my reed. We are back now. You can see that uh, I have gotten all of my threads through the reed and through the heddles. Um, you can see my two lease sticks there that are keeping the cross of my yarn. And so what that just means is that it keeps all of the threads in sequence as to how uh, when I was measuring them. And uh, it just helps prevent tangles. So each of the yarns is going through a heddle and I've chosen to do a broken twill which means that it's necessary to have some floating selvages there. Now, back here, I have tied my yarns on to my back apron bar that will then start getting wound around my back beam. And then once it's all wound on and I have some warp separator in there, then I can start weaving fairly, fairly shortly. So I'm very, very excited to get this project going here. And uh, yeah. I'll see you in the next clip. All right, so I have done quite a little bit of weaving. Uh, right now, oh, here's my cat beans. Uh, right now I have, uh, what what's on my stick shuttle right there is more of the same Anzula Luxury Fibers, um, for better or worsted, in the, oh look, my nails. Um, this is the joy of voiceover. I get to look at things again and be like, oh, what's going on? But I love the texture that this has been weaving up. Um, it's so squishy. Uh, I was a little concerned. It seems a little squished. Um, I Again, I needed to bring it together. So I think I ended up doing eight ends per inch now that I'm looking at the footage again. So I definitely should have been doing 12 ends per inch for this pattern. Then I would have gotten a more square bird's eye twill. However, I love the just little hint of texture that this has especially when the light catches it a certain way. It's just absolutely gorgeous. The yarn is weaving up super, super well. It's holding up very well under tension. Again, it's a merino cashmere nylon, and so that nylon is giving it strength, which is just absolutely fabulous. Uh, the, the strength is necessary when you have yarn on a floor loom because there's just a lot of tension on that yarn when you're working with it. So, um, yeah, again, I'm in love with the texture of this pattern. Couldn't be happier. And uh, I'm going to keep doing some weaving, and I'll see you on the flip side. So here's just a little bit of time-lapse weaving. Um, it's kind of funny to do the voiceover because I'm switching tenses back and forth. But uh, this was a lot of fun to weave, and you can see I am getting a little bit of draw in. Granted, that's also the, the camera angle, but... I really, really enjoyed the process of weaving. I just used four treadles and four harnesses. So it made it for a really quick, quick project. Um, you can see that I'm kind of guiding the yarn around the floating selvage on the ends there, just to make sure that my selvages stay straight and even. All right, so I just finished doing a stream um, while weaving, a weaving stream, if you will. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It went really, really well. Um, some great conversation. Got to teach people some stuff about weaving. It was a lot of fun. Um, however, uh, I've run into an issue with my weaving. Um, also, yes, new hairdo. <laughs> Who dis? Um, I ran out of yarn for my weft. So somewhere my calculation was off, and I think it's coming from how stretchy the yarn is. 
So the warp is using far more yarn than I expected, or it's giving me more length than I expected. Um, and so the weft yarn, which is not under tension, is not stretching. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah, it's one of those. So I've actually added some supplementary yarn for the weft, um, just yarn that I've reclaimed from other projects. And I'm actually really excited about it. I'm using up some old yarn stash and it's still within a color scheme that I like, but it definitely means that the finished cardigan is going to be a little bit more patchwork look than I was expecting on the get-go, but I think that'll be fine. So right here, uh, I used an old Volenvine yarns. It's a Merino Cashmere Nylon, if I remember correctly, a fingering weight that's in a variegated gray. And I really like how this looks against this rusty red. Um, I'm now going to move because I used the whole leftovers of that on this. It gave me probably, I'd say a foot and a half of fabric. Uh, probably less than that when it shrinks down. But uh, yeah, the next one I'm going to use is this hand dyed rust fingering weight yarn. That's also a merino cashmere nylon, if I remember correctly. And uh, I hand dyed this. So I think this will be really fun for a contrast. And then I'm gonna end it with, if I need more, uh, I have this merino cashmere nylon as well. So luckily it's all the same base, uh, essentially. But uh, yeah, for both the Volenvine vine yarn, actually all three of these, the Volenvine vine yarn, my hand dyed yarn, and I think this is Toff yarns, if I remember correctly. I bought it years ago. Um, this Toth yarns, I believe I'm, uh, I'm holding all of it doubled because the yarn that I'm using for the warp, uh, and, and the weft initially is worsted weight and this other stuff is all fingering weight. So I'm just doubling it. Yeah. Um, so that's the update for now. I'll be back when I'm done weaving with some of the rust colored yarn and then I'll be back again when I'm done with this Toth yarns. And hopefully by that point, I have all the yardage done for this because I don't have any more yarn that matches this color palette if, if, I, don't, um, if I don't finish it with this yarn. So this is going, not according to plan, but it's going. See you again. All right, so it's kind of late now, um, but I finished weaving the rest of the warp today. Um, there's still like a few, like there's maybe less than a yard left on the loom. You can see back here. Um, and the fabric beam is pretty full. So I will cut this off the loom tomorrow, wash it up and see how it turned out. All right, so now is the time. Um, I've kind of waited a little bit too long to do this. Not, not too long. There's no such thing as too long. Um, however, I did procrastinate taking this off of the loom, but we are ready, we're ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and show, uh, I'm gonna cut off the pieces of the loom. All righty, so here's the finished piece. I'm gonna cut all of these off. So this is the back beam here. And I'm just giving myself a ton of fringe to work with. That way I have less waste if need be. Pull it out from the front. And it's done. So I just remove the break there. pull it off the loom. So I'm hoping I have enough yardage for what I was planning to do with this, um, which is a cardigan. But if not, I'll just do a nice, like, long, flowy vest or something with this piece. Um, yeah, I, I think I need to go back to the drawing board with figuring out uh, the yardage and stuff. I, I don't know what went wrong with this project, but... Um, We'll see, maybe nothing went wrong. <laughs> Anyways, the next steps are going to be to uh, full it or just basically wash it, um, which I'll do in my portable washing machine. It's nothing super difficult. It has a low setting, 
Um, basically, I just want the fibers to plump up and get a little bit softer. So I will come back later. After I've done that, um, I'll need to let it dry. Uh, and, and then after that, we can start putting together some sort of pattern. All right, so I'm about to wash this yardage, but I had to drape it first. It's so nice. <laughs> um, I'm definitely not gonna have enough for a full-on cardigan the way that I was planning it. Um, next time, I, I need to actually do the proper measurements. Um, I know exactly where I went wrong. Um, which is totally fine. It's totally fine. I'm just gonna move um, Kind of go with the flow on this project, but I think it's gonna end up being a vest rather than a cardigan Which is fine. It'll still be very very fun. So look at this though. Oh So cozy so cozy uh, So I'm gonna give it a nice wash a um, Just gonna put in a light detergent not a big one um, light detergent and some regular water on a low cycle and then I'll spin dry it and then um, I'll let it hang to dry the rest of the way. Um, so it should be fine. I've done that before. Shouldn't have any troubles. Hi everyone. Um, editing Ben here. <laughs> so in the next clip you're gonna hear me mention something. Um, I did not film a clip about this. I almost destroyed the fabric at this point. So, uh, oh, oh my God, what happened was uh, even on the delicate setting, my washing machine that I have, it's, it's a portable washing machine and it's fairly gentle. It, it does a good job, but it's fairly gentle. And I thought it would be fine to throw the fabric in there. Um, it was in fact not fine. <laughs> so what essentially happened is any of the loose parts of the fabric, so there were some areas where um, there were some ends that needed to be woven in, some knots that had, you know, little dangly bits, and then the fringe. Well, when it was spinning around in, like it goes back and forth, it's one of those agitation machines, um, it tangled a lot of that and pulled some threads. It, it almost ruined the fabric. So um, after that happened, I spun dry it, snipped the parts that were problems, retied some knots, put it in for its rinse cycle without agitation. I just put water in there and then rinsed it, spun dry it again, and uh, then it was fine. But just, just a big warning, um, just hand wash it. If you have one of those machines, uh, I would just hand wash it Fill up the, the tank with water and, you know, do what you need to do to full or scrub it. But I almost completely wrecked the project at this point. So, yeah, I'm going to cut it back to past. Well, hello there. Um, so I think I've already done a, a snippet of this. If so, I'll cut this part out, but whatever. Um, I finished the fabric. I washed it and I dried it. Uh, I definitely talked about this because I talked about how it was pretty much like almost a disaster. Um, it's fine, the fabric is fine. I haven't had a lot of time uh, the last few days to actually do anything with this project. So um, hopefully maybe either tomorrow or the next day I'll be able to start piecing this together. But I did measure how much fabric I ended up getting, um, which is 135 inches or about 11 feet, three inches of fabric. So I believe that means that I'll be able to get some sort of long-ish vest out of it. Um, I'm gonna take my measurements tomorrow um, to just see how long I want the potential vest and if what I have can actually do that for me. Um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a tight fit. It's just gonna be a tight fit. So. Anywho, I will see you next time when I have something more to show. Hey everyone, this is like a few weeks later from the last clip, uh, although it's gonna be like not even a couple of seconds for you. Um, so the fabric is all done, it's been washed. I've already mentioned in the last clip uh, how I'm not gonna wash my cloth like this again. Um, there's a lot of like, <sighs> loose ends from where I had knots in the yarn. So I'm a little concerned about that. However, I think, I think it should be fine. I might like purposefully make it look more weathered. 
So um, what I have done though is, well first gotten some stuff on the very ends. I have done like a rolled hem on the bottom here. And now what I'm going to do is pin it up onto the form and essentially start getting together a an endless, uh, not seamless, but an endless cutlass um, hooded vest, I think. So I'm gonna see if the hood works. If not, then I will figure something else out. Alrighty, so I have it pinned up. First of all, say hi, Rowan. Funny. He's been watching me this whole time. He wants to, to play with this. So I have the vest pinned up. I really like the fit of it. It's a collared vest, um, not quite enough to do a full hood. I think I would have needed another yard or so, but this is how it looks. There will be these kind of big side pockets here um, that get folded from the bottom. Um, I think this will be really, really fun, really cute, really flattering. Um, the lighting that you're seeing right now isn't totally accurate. Um, I'm under kind of some yellow lights. And then, of course, you have my colored lights in the backdrop. Um, but I'm really excited. This kind of is going to look a little bit like post-apocalyptic couture. And that's totally my vibe. So I'm going to go ahead and start hand sewing the seams together. Um, and then we'll, we'll see where I am after that. Hey, everyone. It's finished. I finally finished it. So it only took like a month and a week. To, to get this from concept to finished item. Um, I'll walk away, give you the whole thing. Ooh, look at this. Yeah, so it turned out great. I have these big pockets, I almost said big ass pockets, but I mean, they are kind of near, <laughs> near the butt. <laughs> oh, I might have to bleep that. But yeah, I really like how this turned out. Uh, it definitely feels like post-apocalyptic chic. Uh, a cool thing that I can do is if I want to pin it, I can pin it. I might see if I can find my pinannular brooch, because um, I think that would be really cool. But I really like how it looks both pinned and open. So, hell yeah. Thank you all so much for watching this process video on making this handwoven vest. Um, I am excited for the next project that I do. I am working on weaving some pride scarves, so that should be pretty fun, pretty cool project. Um, I won't be doing a video on that since I've already kind of done some live streaming. Um, if you would like to catch me as I do some of these projects live, uh, feel free to hit me up on Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash Lachlan O'Leary, and I'll put a link in the description below. On Friday mornings, I tend to do fiber arts related stuff. So um, uh, it, it might be weaving, it might be knitting, it might be embroidery, crochet, sewing, whatever it might be. Um, I just I pick a project and I work on it Friday mornings. So again, it's twitch.tv slash Lachlan O'Leary. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, please go ahead and give me a subscription um, or, you know, hit the notification icon if you haven't done that. Um, do whatever you want to do. I'm not going to make you do anything. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this project as much as I did. And if you would like further instructions on how to make this, um, I, I can probably write something up, but it's actually, it was quite simple. It's, again, it's one long strip of fabric that I just kind of folded in different ways, and there are three seams sewn up. So each side has a seam. Oh, I guess it's four seams. A back seam, and then a seam where the shoulders meet the yoke. So, but you get this nice, like, rolled yoke here or collar. If I wanted to, I could lift it up, but I don't need to. If I had more fabric, like maybe just even, just even under a yard more fabric, I think I could have made a hood. So now I've got, I've got myself thinking about that. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, living in Los Angeles, folks. Anywho, um, this video is probably already extremely long. I need to compile the footage now and edit it. And I'll see you all in the next video.